Okay, it's recording. Cool. Hey folks, it's Law for Seven. I think everyone's here, so I'll call this uh, meeting to order. Um, Judy, would you like to take the roll, please? Oh, yes, I would. Three. Here. Asplund. Yeah. Stiles. Here. Hozell. Here. Oh, Toby. Here. Also present is village solicitor Chris Connor and assistant village manager John. Thanks, Judy. Okay, so we have an agenda in front of us. We've got a pretty busy night. Hopefully, we've all done our homework. Um, any additions, deletions, rearrangement of this agenda? I have a question. Okay. Um, the first thing on the public hearing in the recommendation, it says that, it, or in planning commission duties, it says that it's a consent agenda item, and it doesn't say so in the agenda. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, I think, John, you want to address that? Uh, so the way that the ordinance is written for section 1226.11a, uh, it doesn't explicitly call it a consent agenda item, but it acts as a consent agenda item of sorts okay. as the text of the So that's how that is ironed out. Okay. You know what? Oh, sorry. Oh. This just occurred to me. I know I'm supposed to keep the phone tabs on this, but uh, I don't believe you guys elected your you elected your sheriff this year. I mean, I know you were it last year, and we just kind of pull them on in. I'll just research that and bring it back to you. Okay, it's in the planning. <laughs> um, so. John, based on your understanding, and Chris, I don't know, maybe you want to weigh in on this, is this is, if, if everything is in order, we can just take an up and down vote on these two items without it having a public hearing? Is that your reading of the ordinance? Well, without without discussion. I mean, if somebody wants to discuss it, then. Yeah, then, right. If, if the planning commission takes no action at the meeting. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Uh, next item is review of the minutes. Uh, pretty quick meeting, Tim. You're the new chair, since we're having elections next week, next time. Um, anyone have any changes to this first page? To the uh, second page? If not, do we have a motion to accept these minutes? So move. A second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? I'll abstain since I wasn't there. I abstain since I wasn't there. But there's three. Yeah, we're there. Okay. Now we don't have any communications. Next item on the agenda is citizens comments. This is a time in the meeting where if you have a question or comment about anything that is not on the agenda, um, now's an opportunity to Press the planning commission. Does anyone have anything? Okay. Uh, with that, we'll move on to the public hearings. So, based upon what I understand from Chris and John, these two subdivision applications, um, if we choose not to take action, they can be approved without any further discussion. Is that correct? Um, as the regulations are written, uh, planning Commission. If you don't you take no action on this at this meeting, the minor provision is deemed approved. That's correct. I have a question about that. Is, is, is there a preferred way? Because it seems it's real easy just to let the staff take action. But is it better for the Commission to have voted on I can see um, both scenarios, and uh, in my experience, I've been in planning commission, uh, two staff, two planning commissions, where every single lot division was voted on by the planning commission. And but a lot of municipalities do allow for small uh, lot splits that do conform to the zoning code to be allowed. Uh, with with most lot splits, uh, I do look at a uh, I do look at a test. It's a, usually a three question test to make sure that they have uh, means of egress to the site and that uh, the site meets the zoning, uh, the new lots meet the zoning requirements and also that uh, any abilities that are set on the lot um, meets the setback requirements for the zoning code. But ultimately it would be a decision of 
planning commission and council to decide on a new regulation for that section of the code of ordinances. Yeah, baseball bar review, I think these both meet the requirements. And so I don't think we need any action. Is that everyone in the is a is a counterpoint to that one of the things you could do is you simply do it the traditional way which is make a motion and that way you can have the discussion because yeah the work's been done and so it, to me it's a distinction without a difference but it does allow for some comment by the planning commission if you want to do it that way and the, the time savings is Minimal, right? And I, for for this, lost for this application, because if you take no action, it's deemed approved, and the staff recommendation is that the applicant needs to get some of his paperwork to mm -hmm. the village. I would recommend that uh, the planning commission review it and accept the staff recommendation on this. Okay. Um, can I ask just one other question? Why is it that we get these long parcel ID numbers on the public hearing notice. It's real. I, I it took me forever to figure out that these first two things were these two things because it isn't the description on the on our agenda is actually not. It's hard to figure out that this is that right. This yeah. description here on this agenda is not clearly these to agenda items, and I'm not sure. Uh, partly it's because there's a big long parcel ID number, and it's a much shorter parcel ID number, and you can figure out that if you take all the zeros out, that's the same parcel ID, but like 450 Allen Street is very clearly at the top of this sheet, but 450 Allen Street is not on the agenda, so just try to, <laughs> try to figure yeah. this out when I'm in a kind of a hurry as I was, was confused. But, so I just want to say other, that. But wouldn't use the application number and the agenda solve that problem as well? Is the application number there? The application number is 15-008. It's, 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 it's not on the agenda. Right. The other thing is that the way the, the F number of the zeros on it is from the directly from the county auditor's website. Right. Uh, and I think the green parcel ID number that the applicant provided is a abbreviated version of that. Yeah. Yeah. So parcel ID for that. So it's just, it's just hard to go back and forth. It would be nice if there was a much clearer, like, one-to-one -one correspondence between what I saw on the report and that. I don't want to take any more time with that. Um, but I'm, I'm sorry, I'm still confused. One and two are what, which? Are eight and nine. 15, zero, zero, eight, 15, zero, zero, nine. Yeah. A lot. There are, okay. Both of them are one staff reports. Okay. Yes. But there's two applications there handwritten by the Applicant. Um, right, but that doesn't occur in the agenda. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard to go from, from this to that. So, are you wanting a motion then? To yes. Separate. Okay. I move approval um, of this um, lot division with the staff recommendation. A second. Yeah. Uh, Judy, want to take the roll? Yeah. Any discussion first? Okay. Um, hold on. Um, there's two documents from Beckman in here, and as far as I can make out, um, the lot numbers don't match. Um, just like, like I guess like there's 81, 79, and 80, and 79 is between them, right? And then on one. Well, the, the applications are for 7981, not 80. Um, okay, so those were together, and now they're being What is on the map is the on, on the color map that was printed on. Village GIS system is what, what it exists right now. The applicant has provided a, a vector map uh, that shows a split, and that is actually the first page, not the second page of that map. So the one that has the, the overview 
has the, the line split there. But he's also proposing to split parcel 81, but there's no line there. Now, parcel 81 is of a size that can be divided into two lots in the RA, RA district, both in width and in area, if it is divided along the Quarry Street side. So the staff recommendation is that we're fine with 79 being divided because you showed that, but you need to show where you're dividing 81 to so make sure. And then we also need to have the official uh, plan of record provided to the village. Okay. Thank you for your clarifying. Any further discussion? Questions? Do you want to follow up, please? Yes, Toby. Yes. Aspen. Yes. Ozell. Yes. Scott. Yes. Reed. Yes. Okay. Next item on the agenda is a fish use application for 423 West Limestone Street. Uh, this will be a public hearing. So what we'll do is um, we discuss this internally, then have any questions for the applicant, um, and then we'll open a public hearing. People make comments, close that public hearing, come back for the discussion, and if we're of the right opinion, we'll make a decision. So, John, you want to explain? Sure. Uh, this is application 15010 for additional use of the accessory dwelling unit, property at 423 West Limestone mm -hmm. Street. Uh, the property owner has converted an existing garage for storage space on the second floor into uh, what the village code has defined as an accessory dwelling unit on the second floor. The applicant has stated that the intent of the remodel is to be, give uh, a family member a person space to store uh, and use a large horizontal sitting machine, which is in the pictures. Uh, village staff was alerted to the remodel by the county building department and upon investigation found that the installation of a bathroom and kitchenette uh, had been installed in that space. Uh, the two-story access accessory building is located in the side yard of the existing house. You can see it on the map that's provided. The dwelling unit is uh, accessed by an exterior staircase in the rear of the garage. The property is zoned RC, high density residential. Uh, the requirements for uh, conditional use are reflected below. Uh, as well as for accessory going units. Do you guys want me to review those? Or? No. Okay. Um, as usual, the duty of the planning commission is to hear and decide these applications, uh, approve, modify, or deny the application. Uh, if you approve the permit, you, you can impose time limitations and require that one or more things are done before the request is initiated. Uh, there's a detailed findings uh, on the next page that go over some of the highlights. Uh, in general, in summary, uh, we reviewed the application. We found that, uh, in general, the, the proposal meets the conditions of the zoning code and the associated uh, visioning and planning documents. However, there are some concerns. Uh, the accessory building unit uh, does not completely share utilities with the main building. The electric, uh, for some odd reason, has been split off, and the, uh, the accessory building unit's meter is uh, separate from the house. Uh, I spoke with uh, our electrical superintendent and said, oh, actually, uh, the, the solution to that would be to retrench a line back to the main house from that meter, and that would share the utility again. So, uh, looking at those requirements, it basic, the accessory value proposal basically meets all but one of the requirements of the zoning code. Uh, there is one thing that the zoning that I could not determine which was the, map, the actual square footage of the accessory going in it. However, um, we believe that it does comply with the 750 uh, square foot maximum. Uh, the place in the garage meets the sizing requirements. Uh, we considered, because if you look at the map, this is on uh, two lots actually, um, we considered trying to regulate it like a separate house. But the way that uh, this is treated, this is actually uh, code. Uh, staff felt that the, uh, the accessory building unit regulations were more conforming with the application of this project than just than applying as a new house. Uh, since there is still a desire to share utilities between the principal structure and the accessory building unit. Uh, the recommendation, well, the electrical superintendent's recommendation is also uh, in that paragraph about putting the separate meter back into the, uh, the, main, the main house by subfeeding it back into the house. Um, with that in mind, staff 
recommends that the uh, planning commission approve the accessory dwelling as uh, with the findings as stated and that the condition for the approval will be that the accessory dwelling must restore sharing of electric with the physical structure. Uh, alternatively, the planning commission can also deny the application based on that, uh, that regulation that I stated, 1262.08E1B, which requires the only to be shared with the physical structure. Uh, do you have any questions? Any questions for John? Um, why, uh, do you know the reason for in the zoning why that's a requirement that the accessory line can their all utilities? I don't know for certain, but I assume that the uh, the reasoning behind that when the zoning code was passed is a concern that uh, that the how, that the accessory buildings would still remain uh, subordinate to the principal structure um, property, and that there wouldn't be this opportunity to split lots that might not be buildable. Uh, for example, in this situation, both it's on two lots. Uh, the second lot is a buildable lot, um, but it is also where a garage is located. So felt that because the garage is still utilized by the primary structure adjacent to it and still in the same ownership that the accessory going uh, regulations and the sharing utilities is part of that are more appropriate. And so to only the um, Board of Zoning Appeals has the right to grant a variance to that condition on an accessory building. That is incorrect. Uh, right. The Board of Zoning Appeals is only allowed to grant variances on a dimensional basis. They cannot grant a variance on some uh, regular condition or stipulation of the requirement of the zoning code. And neither can we. And neither can you. Okay. Hey, Rosa, we have many. Oh, we went round and round on this. this. And, and, and there's this tension between people worried about uh, too much infill, um, uh, essentially a subdividing that was essentially being done on the fly instead of <coughs> by actually dividing a lot, and like John said, we're actually subdividing a lot that is too small to be subdivided, so that you're having separate, separate utilities, so we felt like at least if you had a single utility, then you're at least linking the two buildings um, in that way, even if um, you know, you know, there is a, a smaller rental unit even on the property. Okay. Yeah, it was, it was a difficult decision, and that's what we were, People who had done this a lot before said, if you want to do this, this is the, they kept saying this is really the best way to do it. But there definitely was some difference of opinions um, on this, but that's, that's where we wound up. Okay. And I mean, if people are building on the fly, we, we do have a lot of problems with flooding, and so that's also part of the issue. So it does give you a little bit more control over just people building excessively well. Yeah. Because not. Um, so, that are really other houses. Yeah. Um, any more questions for John? We also have the applicant. John, do you want to? Yeah, I'm going to. Um, I, I want to. Come up to the Actually, yeah. I think we are on camera. Okay. Say who you are. I'm Donna Haller, 423 West Limestone. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to have the utilities attached, mm -hmm. but the electric company said I couldn't do that because the house didn't have enough power. And they already dug two trenches because they originally didn't put enough power in um, for the sewing machine. This, we have this big long arm sewing machine up there. And so um, we, I tried to get it connected, but I couldn't. J&J &J Electric are the ones that came out and told me that. So. Well, that was one of my questions is how come there's no amperage requirements? Because if they're only getting 100 amps for transfer, that's not enough. And they had to put 200 amp in there. Right, that's the standard now, but it might not have been standard in your housing building. Yeah. So is um, that why? But is that why Johnny is saying to reroute it back, re re it back from yeah. the accessory to the house? To the house, but the house is, doesn't have enough power to attach to. No, I'm saying right. the going the other direction. Whoever has the highest power. If the transformer were powering the garage, oh. it's more powerful oh, than your house. That's what I think they're trying to say. Oh, and, and you know, like a lot of that condition, then our superintendent will be working with her to get that taken care of. To ensure that the, uh, that the 
the DFP can go back into her house and she'd be able to, the power system will be able to handle that. Okay. So what are you saying? I'm not sure I follow. What happens if she can't fulfill the requirements of her, her Does that sound like it's going to be a lot of money? Anyone have any more questions for Don? Because I did attach the plumbing to the house yeah, because right. I mean I the originally water, planned on everything. Everything. Yeah. You wanted mm -hmm. everything to be attached. Yeah, okay. <sighs> okay. Well, let's keep all that in mind. And um, if there's any more questions for Don, any more discussion, if not, we'll open the public hearing. Hear from anyone else who has anything to say and and move forward and then bring this topic back up, I guess, here in a little bit. I wish Johnny were here because I would yeah. really like to have a better sense of what we're asking you to do. Yeah, okay. well, and I, this is so not my area of expertise. <laughs> okay, well, with that, um, I guess I'd like to open a public hearing. If anyone else has here has any comments regarding this matter, please step forward, identify yourself into the microphone, and. Uh, Say your piece. Hold it. <coughs> I have one comment, a question. Yes. Question for John. Would the alternative be that Denise, go ahead, Denise, I, Swear, <laughs> I, Denise Swear, I'm a right. person. Can, go the, can you come up to the microphone? Yeah. I know it's a pain. That's right. But we have to be, we have to make right. everybody be. I was talking about this with John today. Mm -hmm. uh, Denise Swear, staff person. Um, the alternative, would that not be going back to the idea then of actually splitting the lot? Um, as as a different, the treating of the different house. Then. Yes. I mean, that could be an alternative. It would have to, I mean, you could share the drive, but you wouldn't be able to share the garage. But I mean, as far as, then you could have your separate utilities. Can you can well, share the water. water. You have a completely separate utility <laughs> that. Point. So it's just why it seems to be practical to do that. Okay, anyone else have any questions or comments? Or the, if not, then we'll close the public hearing. And now it's back here for discussion. I think we know there's the one issue. Um, is there a way we can resolve this in a manner that meets the, at least the spirit of the code and, and doesn't bounce down all over the place either? Well, I wonder, because if we would approve it with the condition that um, the accessory dwelling must restore the shared electricity with, with the main one, uh, then, that's, then the choice would be she would either do that or would not be able to use the accessory building for the purpose that she wants to. I wonder if the other thing would be to wait and have your expert on electricity check it. Electrical um, grass work with yes. Donna to see if they can come up with something. And I, I mean that would put it off for another month or so. Awesome. But then that would give her the option of that if if this restoring it doesn't work, then she could look at doing it as two separate dwellings. But in the code what what are the like ramifications of accessory dwelling as an accessory dwelling, what does that actually mean and how is that enforceable? Well, it would mean you shouldn't use it as a dwelling. Okay. And so it's you not can still use it for the sewing machine, but you can't use it as a rental okay. or a, for someone to live there. So someday down the road, if I wanted to rent it out, right. which is why I built, put a bathroom in yeah, it right. so someday. Okay. You can do that. And I guess I'm, I'm hesitant to make an exception, only because we went around and around this thing, I mean, for months and months. Yeah. And, and there were it's probably 20, 
public meetings where this was a topic. I mean, it was. Uh, Can I ask another question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I didn't ever hear this. I went and got all my permits mm -hmm. and you know, yeah, my building so. permits and plumbing and electric and you know, had, the village was out, the electric company was out twice because they, you know, dug two trenches and no one mentioned this to me. Right. I, you know, so, how are you supposed to find that stuff out? <laughs> so the and, restriction is really just people sleeping yes. there. Yes, a dwelling. As yeah. a dwelling. It's right. not Accessory able to be dwelling. used as a dwelling unless this is approved in some way. Right. So she could really keep on doing what she's doing. But down the road, I really would, you know, maybe want to either me rent it out or sell it and then... But you um, have not you have not taken the suggestion of some feeding it back into the house to find out, like, how expensive that would be. You don't... You don't know, right? No, because I mean, I tried originally to have the house tied to there, so this and they said I there. couldn't. So I just. Mm -hmm. separate it's team. not like I did it to no, try and get around I know. anything. I know. It's, it's very well, clear that you were really trying to do everything right, and so and I mean, so I I hear what you're saying, and I wish we weren't in this little bit of a pickle. So the right. question is good. I'll do. Yeah. I mean, when you go get a, I would think when you got a building permit and all the other permits, that says, yes, you can do this. Right. A lot, a lot of these things are, are handled by the county or the health departments. And so if you have a, I'm doing electrical work, the county just looks at that. Sometimes they just look at that. that piece but at one point, my building is here at the village talking to somebody about this, and nobody's ever mentioned it. Well, I would, I would assume that the building inspector would say, you know, do you have a zoning permit? Isn't that the first thing before they... Yeah, they didn't mention that. When I think what happened was when they came to final, do the final building permit, that's when they said, you know, do you have a zoning permit? Right. It wasn't no one mentioned that I needed anything about zoning or... What did you do this? Pardon? What year? This what? spring. This spring? Just this spring. Right. Well, so, I assume when builders come to the village, we give them, they're planning to do, was the accessory structure there, it was mm -hmm. a garage. Yeah, it's been right. there for 20 so years. That's been there for would've, a long would've time. Would have qualified like an urban model for the second mm -hmm. floor. Right. So, I mean, it's kind of one of those, I think it's one of those instances that I, I can't really speak for the county building department where all the pieces added up to an accessory building unit, but all the pieces didn't work clear to the building department. Until when the final were, happened. When they were doing Because that's when they called me and said, come here and look at this. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, they knew we had a kitchen and a bathroom in it. I mean, because I had they're not got all those different, um, I had to have a permit for every water. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, the building department typically says check with local zoning, but then they call up and say, hey, we're doing a, a plumbing permit or something. Do we need a permit? It's for a remodel. And typically the answer is no, you don't, because usually you're not paying the footprint of the building. Right. Right. So right. I mean, it's, it's entirely possible someone could have said, hey, and really, everything you did was something. fine. It was just that electrical decision that that turned out to be. And I never even heard problem. that part until tonight. Right. No one has mentioned that. I mean, I didn't. Oh, really? So before you came into this Right. Meeting, right right now is when I heard about that. Okay. Well, um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I I mean, I think she talked about like five hundred dollars. So that was there a lot. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Everything you were doing was fine, except for this meter issue. And, and they, so I mean, they knew the meter was there. And I think so. What you are voting on right now, and I think something else pointed out, is whether or not this can utilize an eccentric building unit. It's, it's clearly out there in terms of that in the future. However, they're not doing that right now. Right. Yes. So uh, I, I think it's probably feasible to allow her to continue the use that she's using right now for the sewing yeah. machine mm -hmm. and have her work with the village electrical department to figure out what we do about these buildings and then report that back to the planning commission and, and to make a decision at that point. So in other words, would we be kind of tabling this 
Yeah. And just yes. letting yes. you continue. We'll just table this. Okay. Uh, that's what so I'm going to make, is if we table this, you should probably, because you're not needing, it's not immediate that you want to do that. It's in the future yeah. sometime. So to get a clearer picture for you, what's, what, what's being suggested here, um, and maybe talk to your own electrical person about what they think that kind of a change would cost, and then we'll get a report back one way or another. Okay. Okay. I, I, I have a question about process, and I'm just <clears throat> asking it. I don't. I mean, in a way, it doesn't seem to me <clears throat> to be the appropriate thing to table it. Because you're tabling it indefinitely. Yeah, it's indefinite, and we have. She could, use it this way for two years. So maybe back. should we, I mean, I, I don't know that there's anything for you to hear if she simply needs to go and gather more information and come back at such time that she wants to bring it. If she, and if she wants that in a timely fashion and you want to work with her to get Johnny in there and, and get something going, tabling it seems reasonable. If she'd rather just kind of wait, gather her information, and come back a year from now, then we should probably not table it. That but we do just, just withdraw, withdraw the application. Or withdraw or deny it. But well, we do want Johnny to work with her. Well, that but that can happen. That can happen anyway. without it. But what you could do well, is. That's it. what we did with the Antioch stuff, is we tabled it. But they were going to come back. Yeah, but they came back. There, there was a sense of time. Yes, there, I think. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I would suggest you simply table it, put it on the next agenda. There's, we don't know when the next meeting is likely to happen at this point. That probably will be a good couple months. And. And if, it, if in the meantime she finds it's too expensive, she, she I'm just wondering if it would be better for her to withdraw it than for us to deny it from for Donna's perspective. So what would I withdraw? I didn't well, just, there, there's, there's three choices that have been put on the table. One is the, the planning commission could deny the application, which we wouldn't want. That's uh, what I think. The, the second is to... Uh, withdraw it, meaning, all right, I'm going to go figure out what this problem is with the electric, see if, if it's feasible, uh, and then come back with a new application. Or the third option is to ask that it be tabled, in other words, continued for a period of time. You could ask for the next agenda of the planning commission, because we're not sure when that will be, and that would give you at least weeks, if not a month or two, to talk to the village staff with your contractor or your electrician. And if there were some type of practical hardship or difficulty in doing it, then village staff would know. And then when the matter comes back before the planning commission, it could be discussed more knowledgeably. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Do you have a preference? So you want to uh, withdraw it or do you want to table it? Uh, we can table it, and then if you want to withdraw it later. We can always withdraw it if you can and, and we can, then we can solve the mystery. Okay. Okay, so we have a motion here. Then, I move to... that we table this uh, conditional use application. Do you have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Do you want to call the roll? Yes. Kelzel? Yes. Toby? Yes. Style? Yes. Aspen? Yes. Green? Yes. Okay. So table. Good luck, Donna. Thank you. I wish that one so messed up. <laughs> <laughs> I learned a lot from this whole process. <laughs> I've never do. done anything like this, and I. Okay, the next item on the agenda is conditional use application for 507 Date Street for the office. Um, John, do you want to? The application, yes, uh, this is application 15-011. Uh, it's been on Maxine for an additional use office at 527 Dayton Street. Uh, Maxine Scuba is a licensed professional counselor specializing in career concerns and life transition. She plans to operate a part time practice out of the, uh, the property, the house there. Uh, <coughs> the requirements for the zoning code are listed. The duties are similar to the last application. Uh, planning, uh, the, the planning department looked at the proposal. Uh, the proposal indicates that uh, there could be parking on the street, which is permitted. Um, there's also parking in the driveway and a garage. Uh, section 
E5 L in case a high parking lot to occur in the driveway or home. I do kind of want to you know, offer some clarification on, on E5 L that's uh, nearly going to be home occupation. Mm -hmm. uh, so it doesn't apply here since the uh, applicant is not residing on the premise. Uh, the applicant indicated the office uh, will be visited once or twice a day, uh, one client at a time. Uh, and due to that, uh, at low intensity, uh, staff recommends that. Well, I just want to dial this back because this was the project was written by the intern. Uh, one of the things I do want to point out is that Dayton Street is an arterial street, so the property does have good traffic and. Uh, Roadway access. Uh, the property has ample parking for that, and uh, the uh, hours of use and the value will not be uh, in an intensity as such that will impact the residential character of the neighborhood. Uh, with that, planning staff recommends that the planning commission approve the conditional use of the findings that uh, are listed a bit, uh, on the sheet. Do you have any questions? Any questions for John? Has this uh, property been used as an office before? Uh, our records now. It has okay. not. There's an adjacent property that had that is used as an office. Okay. I think five twenty one. I think it, I remember seeing a little sign on that. Um, any more questions for John? Any discussion here? Yeah, and uh, Maxine, if you want to come up and identify yourself. Yes. Hi, I'm Maxine Scuba. And, um, and I own, I'm a new owner of 527 Dayton Street. Um, I had a property in the state of Maine, which I recently sold, and I did a 1031 exchange, meaning that, um, like kind, um, I, I had rented it out. Now I have to, um, Anything that I buy now has to be rented, meaning that I can't occupy it for two years. Huh. So even if I wanted to live there, I can't for two years. So I have a renter who is a single person who is very happy with the arrangement, likes the arrangement. When I walked in, I realized that it uh, could easily be divided because there's this big um, Losing it. <laughs> it's a big door, mm -hmm. it, and it's a solid wood door mm -hmm. between the office and the uh, rest of the house. And I made a little drawing. Um, this is the front door, and walk into the front door, and there's the office. The tenant would be using this door, which is the living area, the whole living area, and then these are stairs to the upstairs bedrooms. So it's very separate when this door is closed. Um, and uh, I really don't have that much business because of my specialty. Um, and I don't want that much business. Um, I'm, I'm really retired, but <laughs> career counseling is my, um, my calling. And I want to continue it. And I want a more public face um, to it uh, here in town. Can you see that schematic? Yes. Yes. Can I ask you some questions clarifying the schematic? Uh, is there any is there unit separation between your office and the tenant space? As in, like, is there a separate entrance for the tenant? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Back yeah, the back in the corner. And the second question is, do you know if that door is a fire rated door or not? You mean the separation, the separation? door? Fire rated. I don't know. It's it's fully, um, it, it's all wood. But it's like lock and key, so you can lock it in between that. I don't want to lock it because the furnace is in the office area. And so, uh, and I don't want to lock it because that is, the, that is the second exit. So in case of an emergency or fire, that will not be locked for the tenant to exit if, if need be. Have you run this plan by the county building departments? No, I had no knowledge of running the plan by the county building 
The only reason why I ask that is because as a former building inspector, some of these, uh, the shared arrangement here may give some cause to the International Residential Code. So I would advise that it does, it does move forward that you talk to the county about your plans to make sure that the uh, that this will meet the building code and the way you plan on using it for. Does this mean that I have to wait for them to meet? It means that if the Planning Commission does approve this, I recommend, as the planning person, that you speak to the, the county and have a discussion with them on what you need to do, if you need to do anything at all. And so, yeah, you have to meet with them. However, that won't, this, that will, yes. this will not, this is a separate conversation from what we're having tonight. So what he's saying is there's this other inspector, but it's not like a commission. They don't have to meet. You would just meet with them individually and ask them if it, and it shouldn't really affect our decision because we don't have to approve those kinds of things for the building inspector. That's their bailiwick. So it's a recommendation. He's just saying you might want to do that. And would that have something to do with a, a fire-coated door that would separate? Yeah. Um, this is about fire and lamp life safety, so they would be looking at some of those things. But it's a pre existing building, so a lot of that stuff might not need to be changed. Um, I don't know the details, especially when you're dividing something. Typically, when you divide units, you want to have fire separated, uh, at least a three hour fire separation uh, wall and door between units and separate facilities. Uh, that's in the International Building Code. However, if you're in a house, Things might be a little more lenient, but I'm not, I don't know for certain. I just know that you probably should get it checked out. And a window can be a second egress as well. That's correct. Legally. Uh, so, so it could be, um, well, it could be then uh, you're, you're talking about uh, the need, the possible need for a, uh, a door that can be locked that um, would totally separate the two parts. Yeah, and you would probably want to talk to the county building department, Green County Building Department, and they would be able to give you more clarity as to what their the building regulations would apply to that, to your project. Yeah, our zoning code is not stipulate that those right. need to be separate. And so if, this is, if this part's confusing, what I would suggest is maybe um, come back Denise will be in the office. Um, and you can just come back and talk to Denise about John's recommendation. If, because really, it doesn't, it doesn't impinge on what we decide here tonight. It's just a recommendation he's making based on his expertise of building. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And it's also a safety issue. Exactly. That's why. And that's why <coughs> it's yeah. This all started because I wanted to erect a sign in front. <laughs> so sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry about our sign code. That's what we're working on next. Yeah, we have that too. Yeah. We're not laughing at you. We're, we're laughing at ourselves. Really laughing at ourselves because that sign code is terrible. Well, does if you approve this tonight, does that mean that I can get a sign made? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it does, in fact. And we have to actually hint to you how big it's going to be. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what's going to be signed for in residential districts that for non residential uses, which I think is right. The sign that you submitted would probably be approved. I'm going to say 100%, but I think it will be, I think it will be required. Okay, any more questions for Maxine? I don't have any more questions. Okay. With that, if you have a seat, we'll open the public hearing. Anyone wants to come up and um, comments? comments um, please identify yourself and um, say your piece. Okay. I'm Judith Schimpf, and I live at 535, two doors down. Um, and I know Maxine. I didn't know that was her property until I walked in tonight. Um, and I'm very much in favor of it. I know the inside of the house quite well, and I think it's a perfect use of it with the front entrance being her office entrance. Also, uh, Dr. Portenga has his sign out right next door to yes, this, that's to that property. I was thinking <laughs> of that. Okay, so it wouldn't. It would be keeping with our 
wonderful Dayton Street community, and I, I really support it, so I hope you all can uh, okay as well. All right, thanks. Anyone else? Okay, well, with that, uh, then we'll close the public hearing. I want to say I'm really, I like the fact that it's a mixed use, that it's still a rental property because sometimes people want to just convert the whole house and then we lose a rental property. We need rental property. So I'm, I'm just very pleased that you're trying to do this in such a way to have both a business and a rental. Well, that was intense, the whole market scene. Essentially, good. So, uh, any more conversation here? If not, uh, we have a motion to do something. <laughs> so we are, I guess I will move that we approve this, but I'm wondering if we want to then also recommend that she do consult with the county building inspector to see what they might recommend. Do we want that to be a part of it, or do we just want to approve it? I just, it's, it's, it's a matter just, of process okay. to, I mean, like they would, she got approval, she got to apply for a change of use permit, change of use, the new change of use permits uh, have language on that says you must, you know, you were, should, shall consult with the building department. I, I think we should just leave it as is. Just to approve it, okay. Then I move to approve uh, the application for the, um, the 527 Dayton Street operating a part-time practice, a practice. Second. Any further discussion? Judy, care to call the roll? Yes. Style. Yes. Casper. Yes. Ponzo. Yes. Kilby. Yes. Reed. Yes. Okay. Pass. Yay! 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 Agenda is the uh, some old business, some text amendments to the zoning code that John's been working on. Um, John, do you want to give us the overview and then we can get into the details? Uh, just have to give you a review of everything. Some of this stuff is new business, some of this stuff is old business, some of the well, the old business really conform to this cancel some of the zoning line stuff that we talked about the prior uh, planning push meetings. Uh, yeah, just give us the uh, executive summary of your the, the main items. Let me go through them one by one of these. Okay. So there are five items. One uh, would be a proposal to reduce the restriction on, on accessory structures. Uh, two is the addition of pool fencing requirements for outdoor and indoor pools. Three is the addition of driveway setback exemptions from the traditional setback. Four is allowing uh, construction of accessory building expenses additions in, on adjacent non building lots. And five is a uh, reorganization of the signage uh, ordinance by type for better clarity and readability. The uh, first one, accessory dwelling unit restrictions, and the text is, is, is attached. Uh, what it does is, uh, during our analysis, the property is found that regulation eliminating Limiting accessory structures to occupy 30% of the required rear yard is extremely restrictive for properties that may want to locate accessory structures in the rear yard. Now, let me review what that means. 30% of the required rear yard is not the entire rear yard. The required yard is the yard that's from the property line to what the maximum zoning setback is. So if I'm in RB and the rear yard setback is 25 feet and my lot is 55 feet wide, there's a 25 by 55 area, that's 30% of that area, which takes you down, in most cases, to below 200 square feet. So I think the regulation was written in the sense that they didn't want more than 30% of the rear yard to be occupied by yeah. uh, accessory structure. However, the required yard is overly restrictive. Especially in light of the existing requirement for 50% of the building, uh, principal building area, and a 750 square foot maximum. Uh, right. So we're recommending that that be removed from the uh, ordinance altogether. The second uh, is that the code is unclear on a couple of 
parts of section 1260.04A6 uh, uh, regarding whether it applies to multiple accessory structures or it's, it's only one and how it can be uh, built on a lot. The proposed text modifies the, uh, this part to allow for one or a combination of accessory structures to meet some of the more relaxed rules, which is two-thirds or 66% or 800 square feet, uh, whichever is less. Uh, this protects the village, I think, from, I think the reasoning for this ordinance, and I'm guessing here, is uh, to prevent overly large pole barns or large garages to be, to occupy yards, you have the square footage or you, to, to, to maximize it. So I think there's definitely a goal in the village to retain a certain degree of open space. However, um, for a lot of lots that wouldn't meet the minimum requirements of the RAs, Bs, and Cs, um, you would be limited to not, having, not being able to put up a lot of stuff. So you wouldn't be able to have a shed and a garage. Right. You would have to choose between one another. And for example, uh, the application on 11018 Avenue with the accessory dwelling units, that was originally supposed to be larger they had to shrink it to meet our 750 requirement. So, um, so that offers us a little more leeway for multiple structures uh, and uh, also clarifies um, some of that language of accessory structures. Uh, an added recommendation that's not in the text would be to clarify that accessory structures located within a certain distance could be counted as an accessory structure. As, a, as part of one accessory structure, and that is a reflection of 1260.04A1, uh, which says that an accessory building is within 10 feet of a principal building, it's counted as part of a principal building, there's a breezeway, breezeway attached. Right, so that's a clarifying. So, I mean, it would just mean that you can have one, two close together, counted as one. Um, so, you guys want to discuss that first, or do you want to me go through all the other ones? Yeah, let's start there. Start with okay, let's start with this. <coughs> enough to start with, I think. Um, and now this is not a public hearing, right? This is, we're just discussing this as a draft modification, so. Okay. Um. Right, so, so we're not making the amendment, we're, what are we uh, doing with this? Just this is, um, discussing so you're or? not deciding, you're not going to vote to approve the text or deny the text. You're just basically like a legislative practice session. And if you want to give the public an opportunity to get input yes. on these types of items, then I mean, that would also be very okay. beneficial. Right. And so then if we say, yes, we like this, or whatever. So you can say, yes, we like it, you can change it. So if we yeah. say, yes, we like it, then it would come back to us again, or would it go straight to the council? It would come back to you again. We, uh, Judy would have to advertise the actual language that's being changed, okay. and then it would be formally a, Formally voted here and then recommended then to the council. That's correct. Right. Anyone care to start? Um, well, I, I like it. I think that I think uh, um, that makes sense. Um, I have. I guess I have a problem with changing the dimensions of things, just because. We went around and around and around on these dimensions. And some people didn't get their way, and some people did. And I, so I would, and that was just the result of a multitude of public hearings and an opportunity for, for people to weigh in. And so I understand your point about the, the required use of the word required, mm -hmm. making, making things different than just the backyard. I also know that we went around about 30 versus 50 percent, and there were questions about fire safety, there was questions about drainage, and, and the impact of those accessory dwellings on the overall neighborhood and those kind of things, especially with, with respect to fire and drainage. And yet, I think like what Lori said, I think our intent was not this required administrative definition that was 30 percent of the rear yard. Yeah, I don't think we understood uh, that yeah, required yeah. your rear yard had that very specified. I don't. I never looked at it and thought, oh, that's probably something specific. It didn't mean. That's some so, legal definition. Yeah, right. I didn't right. know that. So. 
What about just dropping the word requirement? You can do that. Um, that would probably make the, the the only restriction be the fifty percent billable area and the seven fifty square foot. Well, I have to leave it thirty percent. <coughs> just plus thirty percent for your job. I know we bash through these things multiple times. He's saying the fifty percent on six would be more restrictive than the thirty percent of rear yard. In most cases. Yeah, and again, I just, on six again, I'd like to leave it alone. At least, it's only been two years. Number six alone. Since we passed this yeah, you code. You, would, you suggested that this, that you felt like this was a, a barrier in, in, a, in a case that came before? I've seen three applications for garages that have had to be reduced in size because of this regulation. Mm -hmm. One was the accessory building and another one was another garage. And another one is a uh, application where the applicant wanted to build a, uh, a 24 by 24 garage, and they also had a shed on the property. Okay. And the, com the combined area would actually exceed 50% of the billable area and the 750 requirement by just a little bit. So those have changed to get rid of the requirement? Uh, one of them changed. I don't, I don't think the other one went through, and then the other one uh, is actually uh, because of the required yard thing, they have not proceeded with it at this time. Mm -hmm. With the uh, with the the square footage reduction, in all of those cases, you didn't feel there was concern about uh, things like you know flooding, water going onto other properties as a result of having just a bigger building on the lot. So. Uh, what you're trying to articulate is that because bigger buildings have possibly because they're more they're more pervious they pervious surfaces mm -hmm. that they have uh, drainage issues. Yeah. Um, you know we can add requirements that, for example, the, uh, the driveway requirement uh, that's proposed tonight has a line that says that it will ensure that drainage is sloped away from adjacent property. So it would go. The idea is that if you have drainage, you want that drainage to go to a city drain or a village drain yeah. or at least into the street where it can be carried so away somewhere else or to a ditch. Mm -hmm. So you want to be able to have, you don't want to be have a great situation where the water is <coughs> running off into your neighboring property, coffee makes sense. So you could add language like that. So the square footage, I think what I hear you, what I hear implied in what you're saying is that the square footage requirements are not so much actually about that because that's really handled by other issues. The square yeah. footage is more about Perceptions of open space, of openness in neighborhoods. Yes. And there is a maximum lot coverage already in each zoning uh, district for residential zones. Uh -huh. uh, a lot looked at other zoning ordinances to see if there's get some guidance on accessory structure regulations, mm -hmm. limiting size. A lot of them don't really limit size. Uh, at least uh, the, the only size limit I found is that the accessory structure could be larger than the principal structure. Right. So a lot of the places really kind of are flexible. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I know that, there, that one of the big key goals of the village is to preserve open space and to preserve that that character of the village. Right. So uh, that's why I only propose to propose a modest 50, foot, 50 square foot increase mm -hmm. uh, in two thirds because we have this situation where 50 percent of the building and if your building is uh, if you're trying to a build a small square feet. house, yeah, if you have a tiny house, mm -hmm. the, the house that in one of the examples was about 1,200 square feet, so right. half the 600. You could inadvertently be encouraging larger building, larger main building mm -hmm. because you restricted the accessories so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was something that we we did talk about a little bit. Um, I mean, because part of I mean part of when we when we approved it, yes, we did talk about a lot of these issues. But we also, or at least I also thought, well, we let's see how it works, and if we're running into walls, then we can readjust in public process again. Um, but we needed to get you know 
a million details decided within a kind of abstract situation. And so we, we passed it all. I, I, I hear what you're saying, like we did go around on some of these things and I am, you know, I don't want to change things just to change them if we have one weird situation. You don't want to make laws based on one, no. one yeah. kind of strange situation, like, you know, Donna Haller's situation is, seems like a pretty unusual situation that I, you know, I don't, I wish it weren't, you know, running into our, our, our code, but I don't think the code's involved there. I think it's just a weird situation. Well, here, it sounds more like it's, this is a problem, and I, these are not huge differences from what we decided, and if they, they seem like they're in keeping with the spirit of what we were trying to do, and it, from what you said it is, I'm kind of inclined to make the recommendation to council that we go with, with, uh, with these suggestions. How many of these applications have you processed? That are garages? Or accessory structures? Accessory structures? Uh -huh. That would exceed this requirement? No, they're just, just in total. Yeah. I mean, in the last year. 50% of them have you trouble? Years. Or is it 5%? Just, just the three or four that I've talked about. Uh, so okay. how many of you have approved? I have processed 52 permits as of now. 52? Yeah. So 10%. Okay. Yeah. 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 Or less. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I think Rose had, or somebody, has suggested just taking out the required. So it'd be 30% of rear yard. Does that, what, how would that change well, it? Like I said, uh, it, would, it would basically limit 30% required from applying in most cases, but the 750 to 50% would just be the, the maximum. Okay. So, that's, so that's if we took out the required, it'd just be 30% of rear yard. And, and yes, and I just want to clarify that. Normally, it's in, if I see a situation where a variance would be rec would, would be a, the proper approach to bring it to the Board of Zoning Appeals, uh, that is typically an option that I will provide. However, I feel that a variance application on this measure is so broadly applicable that it would set up an instance where anyone can apply for the same variance over and over again. In that instance, why are we having this regulation? Right. Just change the regulation. Just, just get rid of the regulation altogether because it's really covered by this other mm -hmm. part of the code. That's correct. I think that in the several years since the new zone code has passed, and we've had John here the last year who is very qualified to review our, you know, look at what's working and what's not. I, I would favor going with. His recommendation. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I believe in a, you know, like, I think a lot of work went into the revision of the code, um, but I think that not everything could be foreseen and that it can't be an evolving code. Especially taking advantage of John's work. I would agree with that. Tim? <clears throat> My 32 guess like I never had such close scrutiny on this as far as a long time. So it's true. It's really refreshing. Yeah, that is. Do you want to hear from people here? Yeah. Um, yeah, if anyone has anything to say about this. As before, identify yourself. Okay. Um, I'm Parker Buckley, 326 Fulton Street. Um, we moved in uh, early this spring. We've been kind of making extensive renovations and that sort of thing. As part of that, we wanted to build a, a modest two-car garage at the uh, rear of the lot um, with alleyway access. There's also a, a small shed, which has probably been there for 50 years or more, uh, and uh, it's about uh, 12 by 15 feet. I want to use as a workshop. So we've, we've also um, recited that and cleaned that up as well. Um, so I'm really encouraged by, by the discussion so far, and I, I do agree that this 30% uh, of the required rear yard, you know, yeah, as, as a, I think we all understand that required rear yard as defined is this strip of land between a setback line and the actual property line, regardless of we could have a five acre backyard, but we're restricted by that little strip of, of land as, as Fine. So I certainly support changing that language. And then the other things about 
adjusting the square footage, I, you know, I, I think we're okay there either, in either case, but um, I, you know, I encourage, that probably gives us a little more wiggle room too. We're talking about a 24 by 24 garage, modest, modest to current garage, so, mm -hmm. um, so we're not doing anything strange or, you know, and, and we do have a lot and a half there. We based all of our numbers on, uh, uh, this may not be correct with, with John, but we based our numbers on the, the, main, the main lot where our home is. This shed is on this adjacent strip of land, and that's the only thing on that strip of land. So, you know, if, if we had to apply for a variance, that would be one of our points is that if you look at the combined square footage that we have there, we still have a lot of open space left. So, that would be one of my points going forward that hopefully we don't have to go that way. Well, we're going to talk about here that here a little bit too. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Get there. Okay. All right. Okay, well, I guess uh, based on what I'm hearing is. Did you uh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think uh, Alex Melded, 205 North Walnut, I've been working with them uh, on, on the garage issue. Um, thanks, guys, for being here. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I think that the. Uh, I was going to come in support of removing the word required, uh, but uh, upon reading this new language, I think it is a little fair in terms of uh, the variability of rear yards in general. I guess the required yard is useful because it's somewhat uniform, um, but uh, still kind of unfair when for people who want to build uh, uh, two-car garages. Um, I think they also benefit uh, the rental market for carriage houses and, and things like that. So I think it benefits the village to, to have those kind of buildings go up. And I don't need to say all the other stuff that I've been Okay, Thanks. great. Thanks. Anybody else? Last chance. <laughs> okay, well, I'm. Uh, so upon. Should, we, should we vote on each little I think section? We should. I, think I think we should at least give John a recommendation mm -hmm. as to whether we want to hear this as a formal, a formal language. I move that uh, the points addressed under point one of the discussion should be brought forward as changes to the code to back to this body. We have a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? I'll make a point, John. Well, you're not going to be here, are you? No. Uh, Denise will be. Denise? <laughs> she was in the assembly. I guess I'd be like, curious to see the number of applications versus the ones that have had problems. <coughs> what kind of percentage we're talking about? Are we talking about 2%, 5%, 50%? I can go through. I mean, there are some applications that did not get permits. Right. Yeah. So they won't they not they wouldn't be for it. And then so we're not gonna do this. Because of the difficulty of the Well even if you could anecdotally include those, because right. I mean I think those should be considered as well. Okay. And also in the interim period, whether it's a month or three, I'd like to try to be taking some of those notes kind of refresh myself on those discussions about where these uh, all yeah. yeah. Because it's all a little fuzzy. Yeah. That would be fine. But <clears throat> are you making that recommendation with the, the language changes that you discussed or just as it stands here? With the language? Well, wait. What do you mean? <laughs> well, you, you as sort of batted around. Um, with the language. As it stands. With the, as it stands. With, stands. with John's okay. language. <clears throat> so just to review, that would be a modification of section three of that to remove the re in any case, accessory buildings and structures shall not occupy more than thirty percent of the required rear yard. Right. And section six of that to add in language the total square footage of all in front of accessory structures add on the property shall not exceed sixty six percent of the principal before the building floor area or eight hundred square feet, whichever is less. Right. Okay. Council fifty four A point three and council sixty four A point six. Any further discussion? Judy, you want to call the roll? Yep. Hello. Yes. Stiles. Yes. Toby. Yes. Aslan. Yep. Reed. Yes. Okay. Okay, next on the list. John? The next list, uh, number two, we had swimming pool rate requirements. Uh, this is an addition of baseline uh, regulation protection for the building regarding the extension of indoor and above. Uh, to mean outdoor and in-ground uh, swimming pools, uh, above ground and in-ground, sorry. Currently there are no regulations in the zoning code or the village code ordinances regarding pools. Uh, 
since fencing is a zoning requirement, it makes sense to regulate that aspect of pool installation. Uh, it should be noted that the intent of regulation is to primarily address permanent pool installations. However, there are temporary pools that would exceed the minimum depth of two feet. Since they are temporary, they are typically not considered to be regulated under the zoning code. And there's a greater debate about these pools uh, at a national level. Regardless, it would be up to the zoning administrator at the time uh, in their discretion to decide whether these regulations would apply to temporary pools or not. Also, staff has found that in these cases, it's better for the village to have these regulations as to not have them as it offers a baseline legal protection to the village and its interest in the public safety and welfare. And the regulations are that above ground and in ground pools built above about a depth of two feet shall meet the setback standards of this ordinance with the top value provisions. A, the pool shall be surrounded by a fence at least four feet in height on all sides and be accessed by a self closing and self hatching gates. And B, that is pool surrounding by an elevated deck with hand railings and a gate may also be, may also comply with this requirement. So that's an instance where you have a pool surrounded by, a, in a yard, surrounded by a fence, with self closing and self hatching gates. And then in the second instance, you would have a deck built around the pool. That would act as a gate. Or okay. So. I think it's all. Any discussion here? Any questions for John? Um, so this 13 and 14 are going under uses. They're all accessory uses. Accessory uses. How? Okay. Why the use of the word? I just want to be clear. Why may for 13B rather than? Does and shall. Shall. Yeah. Because it's uh, it's it's an alternative uh, or an exception to that. And uh, if I use well, the answer could be a shall because the A's uh, or maybe can. Can also comply with this requirement. The requirement section A. The goal purpose of it is to provide safety, so it's mm -hmm. so much you get is a must, but it's also your second proposal is a would be alternative, so it may be an option. Yeah. It just sounds <clears throat> uncertain. Like if, I guess I read it if I'm a homeowner and think about it, it's like may. It sounds like well, I don't know. Will it? Yeah, might not. It might not do it. <coughs> what, a, what, a, what would be a circumstance where it would? That's, that's the way what I can do it. What we can do is we can rewrite A. The pool shall be surrounded by a fence at least four feet in height with self closing and self matching gate or uh, by deck, elevated deck with hand railings. So it would be an option. And so the deck and the hand railing would be at least four feet in height? If the, if the deck is built to uh, building code specifications, they have to have a hand railing of at least 32 to 36 inches, I think, with uh, no gap between this wider than two and a half inches. So if it's built to code, then it would basically take, be taller than a four foot fence. So you have an above ground pool. I would I would prefer it. I, the, and maybe I'm wrong, but to me the May sounds like there there's some question that would have to be. Like, that sounds like the harder, even though, but then there's nothing that tells me like, what I would have to do. So I I think I would prefer it to just read over and have it just be all one thing. And either this or that. That's the one. Or the other. Okay. Can you, can you add the word compliant? If you say self hatching gate or by uh, a compliant elevated deck with hand railings, uh, or is that too vague? I, I just heard you say that if, yeah. if the deck the and goes. hand railings are compliant, then they will suffice. If they're not, they won't. And that, that just seems like a big gap. The thing is, they, they, <coughs> we have to assume that everything complies with building codes. We don't specify. Your house must comply with the Green County building codes because that's implicit that they have anything you build has to comply with building codes. Correct. 
Yeah, I mean, you still had that language in there as a, as a blanket. I think there's a pool that's special and it should be like elevated deck and hand railing. It's just such a vague, it sounds vaguer than house, you know? Yeah. Especially because these are the kinds of things that homeowners may build themselves. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so, so elevated at the grade of the pool, at the elevation of the pool then? Because you don't want to have a, a pool that's higher or lower. I mean, that's higher or lower the pool. Well, isn't that in the code? Wouldn't that be in the building there? Yes, sir. Yeah. Off well, the top of my head, I haven't looked. Are we going to the code or are we going to the the residential code doesn't really, you know, re re the residential code talks about the, the, the construction of the deck in the sense that you have to be hand railings and, right. and those types of things, like with the, the I think the it sounds like it's it not. I, I think maybe in this instance, going ahead and putting the language of elevated deck and hand railings compliant with local, building compliant building with local building codes, even though we normally wouldn't do that for everything. For decks and things like that, it probably doesn't hurt to just put that language yeah, in. Yeah, it's not hurt, right? It doesn't hurt. We need to repeat self closing and self latching. So, the only, and that looking over this again, the only thing I concern I have for the self closing, self latching uh, on the deck is that maybe what if there's a deck that's constructed that doesn't even have access. Uh, outside of the, the, the house. If, for example, let's say it's on the back of your house, your the self-closing cell phone chain doesn't, uh, doesn't apply to the door that you access the house to, that, that was already given. Yeah. The self-closing cell phone chain is for access to the pool from outside force because it's yeah. used to prevent uh, someone from climbing a fence or going over somewhere and getting, getting into your pool. Mm -hmm. So you already have right of entry from the, the door, so you don't need to have a second self-closing cell phone chain gate right. for a deck it does not directly access the yard. So I would say that uh, all um, exterior means of egress for the deck would be self closing self latching gate or something to that effect. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That sounds like a good idea. I'm glad you discovered this, but we never even noticed that there was nothing about swimming pools. I obviously don't think about <laughs> having a swimming pool in my yard. But uh, well, I, I think in general, the village pool is used so often that not everyone really has a pool in the village. However, we still need to there have. There definitely are, though. Because there are pools. Okay, <laughs> count about town. I think so. Yeah. All right. I know you admitted that they uh, let out the fish ponds, koi ponds. Yeah. <coughs> One or two feet deep. Hey, if they're koi, they're four feet deep. Yeah, they are, because the koi need it to be a koi need it. Why is it looking at it? But you may have to adjust that under landscaping. I'm pretty sure. No, they, yeah, more water would be better. Yeah. But I mean, we actually had somebody else brown. Yeah. Yeah. And then their silk, their child was brown trying to see. Yeah. Just this summer. Well, this well this this in summer. ground pool, if, it, if you had a four foot deep koi pool, that would be an in-ground pool. I mean, it could be interpreted as that. I think that the intent though is for a stream pool. For uh -huh. You would go to quarry, not uh -huh. fish. Cool. Square foot. I think the pool means anything like above the depth of two feet. I think your point though is, I, mean, I think the point that John was trying to address was the issue of someone trying to access the pool for uh, illegal uh, recreational purposes rather than I'm going to fish right now in your th pool. Oh, and I thought it was more for, for like, like no, is it for children? For children? For children? Just for kind of like, but that, that's already, that, that's already, if you try to get insurance, yeah, no, for that, that, I mean, that's sort of regulated in other ways other than a zoning code. Just saying. Not that I have a coin pond, I'm just... <laughs> Okay, well, I, I'm fine with this. <coughs> I'll open it up for a couple Yeah, minutes. any uh, comments on this? Okay. Burning issue in the swimming pool. Okay. Um,
you want to have a motion to see you have job earnings to us as a full change? I so move that John, uh, not John, I'm sorry, not John, <laughs> so that staff um, uh, bring back the language uh, as modified as, as discussed, um, putting the, um, the fence and the elevated deck same, um, effectively in the same sentence, under, as, a, say, as a single point under point 13. Do you have a second? I second. Any further discussion? Nicole Rule? Yes, Toby? Yes. Proposal? Yes. Asplund? Yep. Sun? Yes. Reed? Yes. All right. Next is driveways. So uh, this is the driveway. This is an exemption to the setback capability for driveways in the village for residential zones. Uh, the zoning code currently does not regulate directly regulate the installation of driveways for residential properties. It regulates parking areas. However, it does not count driveways for parking areas and commercial drives for parking lots. The proposed text addition will give greater guidance and clear clarity to the location and installation of driveways. Regulations allow driveways to be closer than the traditional side yard setback and also directs that the driveway be installed and that that not adversely affect the neighboring properties. The text reads, uh, residential excess driveways shall be at least three feet from the side property lines and construction shall ensure that drain that drain is swept away from adjacent properties. Okay. Any discussion? Has this come up in your in, in a concrete yeah. form, so to speak? We've yeah. had a couple of uh, yeah. situations <laughs> where uh, black black people have wanted to install, have been asking where the driveway needs to be installed, and the zoning code doesn't even Perfect. address it. The whole so it implies that. The driveway is whatever the side yard setback is in the pictures, mm -hmm. uh, in the but that is not a concrete right. kind of like a okay. suggestion. Okay. So this Kirby would yeah. Um, should, uh, should this be in accessory uses? Should it also be added somewhere else in the code that talks about? Um, traditionally, it's been right in other zoning codes that have regulated as an accessory structure or an accessory use. Okay. So. Okay, I guess it is. I agree just a lot. Don't feel accessory. And this is also kind of like it's a construction project. This is the regulation that's supposed to have regularly accessible, usually by staff. They put okay. the issue here first. Right. I'm surprised they get all those drawings. I know. So strange. Okay. Well, it seems good to me. Any more discussion here? I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's general. Um, you want to? Alex Milner. Uh, if this, uh, if you guys approve these language changes, um, they arrive, show up in the next village council meeting for a Not that fast. No, no, oh, they got to come here. Andre, sorry, they got to come here. As a formal public here. This is informal. It'll be a formal yes. one. The wheels of government. We need to get out of the text of the paper. My, my so advice will be for us to definitely take this up right away in September so if you can get to council by October. Cool. Thank you. That would be my advice. And does council need two readings of it? Yes. Uh, it would be an ordinance change, so yeah, or. <laughs> yeah, it does need two readings. Um, now we could vote on them as an emergency measure if the case were made, and that would mean we could make it so that it would take effect immediately. Could make the difference between breaking ground this year. Yeah, usually it has the language has to be about welfare, blah blah blah. So well, you can talk to maybe our our. Uh, I'll, I'll try to find out a little bit more about, about that um, since there are people who are affected by it. It, it actually would meet the uh, 
litmus test for uh, economic development and therefore the welfare and prosperity of the village. And, I mean, it, you it would be the litmus test. Be and and really, you just have to make the case okay. so the council felt comfortable with. Yeah. It's not just one That's guy. usually what it is. It's relatively yeah. not controversial. Yeah. So, so we, can, uh, we can try to make that case. Okay, right. any further questions for John? If not, we have a motion to have you bring this text back to us as a formal change. So moved. Second. We have a second. You second. Okay. And was that you, Rose? Yeah. Okay. Styles. Yes. Aston. Yeah. Rose. Yes. Clothing. Yes. Three. Yes. Okay, before we get to the signs, in the non conforming lots of record, um, John, again, you want to kind of give us the, the nutshell? Uh, this proposal arises out of a discussion to create a dining lot that's been going on for the last uh, several months. Staff so found that the process for uh, enforcing and creating a zoning lot determination would exceed the resources available to the staff, would basically require keeping. Uh, our current application on file that would be separate from the county auditor and the supporters, which would create a lot of confusion on that. So uh, we would be actually, have actually been exploring just text changes that would grant uh, the types of exemptions to interior lots that are owned by the same entity for non-principal structures. Uh, so the regulation is crafted to allow properties that are made up of a series of non conforming lots or if you have a conforming lot adjacent to an non-conforming lot, uh, to be counted as one lot for those purposes, of, for the, those purposes only. So the language crafted is not include a series of billable lots. Also, it's not it's not instructed to also comply with regulations that you have one principal structure per lot, which is in section 1260. So, so this is to avoid requiring property owners Replat. Replat and resurvey. For the purposes of just building accessory stuff. If you demolish your house, build a new house, you gotta replat. If you're gonna do something over that lot line. So this is for two non conforming or one conforming and one non conforming? If I have one non conforming and one non conforming together, they can count as a, as a, as a total lot area. And the exterior of that would be lot setbacks are not being so it wouldn't count the interior lots. And then or you have a conforming lot next to a flight, maybe an alley an alley right away that has been vacated or something, and that will be counted together instead of separately. What about if you have two conforming lots? No. Okay. You have to combine them as a replay. Yeah the if you want to build across that property line. The text says that um, Adjoining non conforming lots of record or non conforming lots adjoining conforming lots that are owned by the same property owner of record shall be counted as a whole for the purpose of erecting accessory structures, additions, fences, and signs if the following criteria are met. One, there's an pr existing principal structure on the property and it was constructed prior to the adoption of the zone ordinance. Two, the proposed improvements must comply with the existing zoning setback regulations for the exterior portions of the adjoining lots not owned by the same property owner. So that means mm -hmm. uh, it, it just only applies to non-conforming lots of record. You can't have two conforming lots together. Okay, and the non-conforming lot lots. is a lot that doesn't meet the zoning setback. I mean, the zoning with the size small. requirement. Yes. Usually, yeah. yeah. And so someone could build on both lots and like straddle them. If one is too small, the other is too small. I'm saying is that. It only applies to accessory structures because you don't want to, you can't have a principal structure occupying two, a brand new one. You, but you have, we have situations in the village all over the place where a principal structure built before the adoption of the zoning code uh, straddles lots or is part of a series of two or three lots that are all non conforming and they want to do things like build garages and fences. And I have to tell them to replat. Right. Or something that is it's really like a one thousand or two thousand dollar job. Mm -hmm. So, what this does is it, it makes those lots count as one, right? But only for non-conforming or conforming that are adjacent to a non 
platform that are owned by the same entity, the same only one to on the auditor side. I mean, it seems like this is something that is logical to do um, because these are minimal changes being made and uh, that adding the time and the expense of the whole replat process shouldn't have to happen because somebody wants to put the fence. Because they've got the very nearby situation and it uh, makes sense to me. Any other comments? You did change the instrument on it. Under B, uh, last word before the colon, R that. It's a grammatical. Oh, yeah. Sorry. You read it correctly. So uh, she's a professor. I got it. I got to do, do my, my <laughs> sure, <first> reading. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Alex Nomad. Uh, yeah, I think this uh, this language is very helpful in terms of clarifying uh, what is allowed because there's a lot of incentive, I think, to maybe say, oh, well, we want to build this thing here, and if it helps us if we don't count it, there's a lot of ambiguity. So it's just a, a nod to fairness. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Anybody else? Any more comments? Okay, back to us. Um, any more comments for John? We have a recommendation here or a motion? Well, I move uh, that we approve the additional language that has been provided by staff on non conforming lots of record. Second. Well, we have a second. As long as R is there rather than is. Yeah. Should we take a call? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Styles? Yes. Hozell? Yes. Yeah. Aspen? Yep. Three. Yes. Okay, it's 830. You want to press on with the signs? Uh, let's, let's do it. I think the signs is such a disaster that anything I want to hear from John before he leaves about our disaster. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I just want to say this is my favorite part of the entire vision. Oh, yeah. Is it? Because it's in color. It's, it's in color. color. <laughs> the other thing I just want to say that every time I looked at the sign section of the code, it gave me despair. And when I asked people to help me like, make any heads or tails of it, they didn't. So anything that makes it clearer and shorter is so to me. Oh, I think it came late in the process. I thought it was pretty old. Do you think you guys made it awesome? No, I I already like it better because it's close. Well, and it doesn't change anything. It just puts it in a point yeah. that it's out of damage. So, yeah, yeah, just the, the long version is that this doesn't alter any regulations. It makes it more readable. Um, what it's basically done is it's taken four pages and condensed it down to two. Uh, what that what that entails is a little bit on the on the face, a little more complicated. So each sign is now a type of sign, so type A, type B, and so forth. But they are now uh, what the which the problem with the existing sign regulations are is that there are a lot of times where a certain sign type is just restated several times. Yes. And then the same regulations are very similar. Or there's some there's one thing that's different. So what I've done is I've gone through the ground sign is, for example, is in three different places, four different places. Right. Um, now it's only it's a, it's a type A sign. Yes. And same thing with wall sign, some of the other ones. Yeah, no, I love this. It actually doesn't scare me the way the old section did. And that is a good thing. And so the table is split into two now. Mm -hmm. Table A and table B and unfortunately the excuse me, uh, there's still table A and table B. So table uh, table A is uh, now a chart that has the different zones and then the type the sign classifications on top and the P's stand for permitted and the, the stars stand for permitted and non-residential uses only and uh, the swooping line is not permitted. So we have a series of chart that clearly shows where each sign type is located now. Uh, one thing I of the original table I did change to keep and that's why table 126605B is still round. Is there a signage that's permitted in all districts? I just left that alone because that's just the ancillary table to the table above. 
But that's basically its formatting change. Where did the 64 square feet come from? About 48 was the biggest that we had. That was in the code. 64 square feet.
I think so. And commercial to be business. Yeah, we have that. And then, yeah, I think it would, I, those are all the only ones yeah, we have, right? Yeah. Business yes. education, and what we do, so. Yeah, 64 square feet. It's yeah. uh, under both educational and industrial. Um, There's no change to the new special. Right. Now, does this code address? I've mentioned before political signs 30 days below. Was this? Yeah. Is it supposed to be? Political signs, though, are not, they're not in this section. Okay. They're in section 1216. Slide eight. It's 1216. Is that the all districts community special sign? Under uh, tables. Special event sign, right? Just saying that. Signs exempt from permits. Actually, 1263. Mm -hmm. Sorry. 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 Yeah. Did you say something? Sorry. Right. Then she says that they uh, shall not be placed in the right of the right. Okay. There used to be a time limit. Right. That's set by the state. That state? I think. Yeah, so there's a state. There's a state. 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 Right. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm, I, I would like to move that we uh, also have this reorganization of signage se section brought to us um, as a formal um, uh, piece of legislation. Text amendment. Thank you. So that's a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Can we ask, uh, include the... Uh Oh yeah, with the with the minor yeah. amendments so discussed regarding the designation of uh, districts. Maybe not so dark purple. Oh, those are customizable by uh, by the rule. Actually, put them in the. Okay. A lot of the. Let the text it be known that the purple is a little dark. Yeah. Whatever <laughs> <laughs> the. Any the other discussion? I uh, uh, Judy. Pillsbury. Yes. Aslan. Yes. Toby. Yes. Styles. Yes. Green. Yes. I think we're finished. I think so. Okay. Well, thank you, John. Thank you, John. John, thanks. Sorry to see you go. You. We are uh, sorry. I'm really glad about the work that you did get done on the. I mean, all the work you got done, but this zoning code work. I'm especially pleased with. Thank you. Um, I guess I just want to say I've got, it's been a pleasure working with everybody here. It's been one of the best planning commissions I've ever experienced. So, uh, raise the roof of all. I hope that you know we, we all stay in touch. And, you know, I you know, always you know if you guys need any advice or anything, I can help point you in the right direction. Don't hesitate to email me or call me, and we can talk. Awesome. Good luck to you. Great. Thank you. Yeah, that's we have nothing left on the agenda, so do we have a motion to adjourn? Oh, wait. Do we have agenda any planning? <laughs> yeah, that part. You had suggested? I would like us to go ahead and plan to meet because I think these uh, right. changes are kind of pressing. Is it possible to get them done by the time of our scheduled September whatever, 14th? No. Second Monday is the 14th. Wait, wait a second. This paper comes out on the 23rd. Yeah, actually. But only if, John, you can get the language ready for me by tomorrow. Okay. And, and they, may, they may not be able to take that much text. Text, if they can't, um, perhaps. You could consider going to a yeah, we change fourth everything. Monday, the fourth Monday, and doing it twice, or you can What if they put it on the website? Is that it has to be in the paper? Okay. Well, I would say I would be okay. What the fourth Monday is? In September twenty eighth. I don't. I don't think I've got anything. The fourth Monday is the twenty eighth. Yes. 
Well, I can I can let you know. I mean, I will know right. tomorrow, and I'll send an email tonight and just ask if they've got the space, and then can you get us to me tomorrow to get it, and then I'll let you know if it's going. Is but it up? Does it work for me? It, it, it works for me to have it be on the 28th. Does anybody else know if they got a? They could do like a possibly. I'm available. You're available. Yeah, we, we got okay, so we've got we're we're gonna be good. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've got our meeting tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Yeah. 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 Yeah.